everything I've shown you about how to work with date times in R to this point has been what we call base R code. What this means is you don't have to have anything else installed in order to make what I have shown you work. R packages are these bundles of code that often make our lives easier in some way. So for example, ggplot2, which we loaded up at the beginning of this session, is a bundle of code that helps people make really nice graphs. Something ex also exists like ggplot, but for dates. Through Luberdate, you can do everything that we just did, plus it contains a variety of other useful pieces that allow you to work with dates um, very seamlessly and to do calculations and functions with dates that might be a little more cumbersome to do otherwise. I'm just going to give you a basic introduction to Luberdate today, but if you Google Luberdate uh, on the internet, you'll be able to find all sorts of resources for all the different things that Luberdate can do with dates. Go to our R script, load the library for Luberdate. So just because you've installed a package on your computer doesn't mean that R is paying attention to it yet. So to tell R that it should be paying attention to a particular package, you have to use this command that I just typed in, library, and the name of the package. I'm going to run this. One of the nice things about Luberdate is that unlike with POSIX CD and as date, um, we don't necessarily have to tell it the format that the data is in. We simply have to use the right function that has the correct structure for what order that information is available. Let's see this in operation, and I think it's going to make a lot more sense. So let's start by just creating a variable. I'm going to call it love for fun. And then I'm going to specify the package that the function I want to use is coming from. This is not a necessary step, but it can be a nice bookkeeping step to help specify where a function is coming from if it's not one of the base R functions. And then the function I'm going to use is the year, month, day function, because that's the order that my date is being, has the information presented, the year first, the month, and then the day. And now I'm going to tell it to go to the daily file and pull down that date information. And this is all I have to give it, <laughs> except I should really load my package first, right? All right, now I've looked at the package. Let's rerun that line. Really? Oh. See what happens. Look at the first few rows of lub. They're spitting them back to me in a format that looks acceptable. Let's look at what the computer thinks these are. And it's a date. So through Luberdate, we have very successfully converted our date column into a date format that the computer can now work with. This happened very seamlessly, but that's not very surprising because we have the ISO date format. So it's not like this is a wow moment. But let's give it a date that as date couldn't just automatically import without a lot of extra information. Uh, so let's create a new test date. And we'll set it up with the year first, the month second, and the day last. Ooh. I would like to throw in a comma here just to make things a little more complicated for the computer. All right, let's save that. And now let's run, and now let's apply that year, month, day function to this date and see how it handles it. Uh, equal Uber date, colon, colon, y month, day, that's date, run. So it ran it without giving us any errors. And if we look over here in the environment window, what we see is that it has extracted the information, it has put it in the ISO format, and it has done so without me having to tell it anything other than the year is the first piece of information, the month is the second piece of information, and the day will be the third piece of information. And it knows what it's looking for and is able to do all of that without you having to specify exactly what that format looks like, which is pretty sweet. We can also use a different function that does the same thing with date times. So let's do that. Let's call this love a time. Uber date, colon, colon. And in this case, the structure of our data is year, month, date, hour, minute. 
And so that's the function we're going to use. Year, month, date, underscore, hour, minute. We will give it our date time data and that date time column. When we did just this without adding any type of formatting, POSIX couldn't handle it. We had to specify the format for POSIX to work. Here, let's see what happens when we don't do that. Run this line. Let's look at the head of love time. And what we see is that it has extracted all of that. Unlike the POSIX commands, it has added a different time zone um, to this. And again, that's something that you can modify. One of the other nice things about Lubridate is that it also comes up packaged with a bunch of functions that can allow you to work with and manipulate dates and make calculations off of dates um, fairly easily. So for example, uh, there is a function that will look at your computer and extract what day your computer thinks it is. There are functions that allow you to take a date and add a certain number of days to it. So in this case, I'm going to add five days to a particular date which can be useful if what you're trying to do is you know a certain date that something happened and you want to see what the data looks like five days after that particular date. And so there's all these kind of cute little functions associated with Lubridate that allow you to do all of these little manipulations with dates that can be really useful under certain circumstances, uh, but that coding for yourself might be a little laborious. Whether you use Lubridates or AsDate or POSIX, um, it really is up to you and what is useful for you and what works for your context. But these series of functions and packages are really the workhorse of working with dates and times in R. And if you're going to be working with time series in the future, knowing how to work with dates and times and format them appropriately can be really useful. All right, that's the end of the segment. If you have any questions about this segment of material, anything that didn't work for you, anything that you're curious about, uh, for your own research that you may have questions about, feel free to come to the Zoom class on Thursday and I will be there to answer any questions that anyone has. So see you then.